Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I wanted to show you a quick Christmas ornament that you can crochet. This features the cable stitch, low front ridge, and the wattle stitch for those of you who are familiar with those stitches. I made this using scraps of worsted weight acrylic. Of course, you can use scraps of any type of yarn from your stash. Um, I'm estimating it takes approximately 20 yards of the red and perhaps 20 yards of the white. Again, these are estimates, but um, small amounts of yarn for these. Now let me show you what this looks like in a monochromatic version, which is just a single color. And um, you can make these as simple or as pretty as you'd like. And these tops do come out. Again, I got these from my local Dollar Tree store. They do have these, I believe, at Michael's and maybe even Walmart in the U.S. Um, and you can even put some glue inside and sprinkle some uh, glitter and, you know, shake that around inside if you want to have a little bit of a glittery effect. Or you could even spray, like the outside um, monochromatic version. A friend of mine says it looks like a snowball. So what you could even do is spray some spray glue on the outside or even just brush some clear glue lightly on the outside and then roll in some glitter for an added sparkly touch. Well, let me go ahead and I'll give you a better view of what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using some worsted weight yarn from my stash. This is leftover scraps and it really doesn't matter the brand as long as you're using worsted weight and if you even wanted to use smaller yarn you can simply adjust as we go i'm going to be using a size i or nine or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook and as always i recommend that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy and another important thing that you're going to need for this project is a simple uh, ornament. I, I got this at my local dollar store, and um, you can probably find these at Michael's Crafts. To begin, we're going to start with our slip knot, and we're going to chain 11. And we're going to form a circle just like that by working a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Chain one and to begin we're going to in that same space as joining work a single crochet chain one and a double crochet we're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to work a single crochet, chain one, double crochet. I call this a waddle stitch when we combine these three stitches. Skip the next stitch and the next stitch. We're going to work a single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and again skip one and we're going to work that Again, the waddle stitch in that next stitch. Skip the next stitch. And skip the next stitch and in the next. Do it one more time. Okay, so you should have a total of, let's go ahead and count these. One, two, three, four, five, six waddle stitches and a circle. And then we're going to join to the top of that first single crochet with a slip stitch. Okay, now this is where it's, it's important. No matter what um, size you have, I'm going to take the top off. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a sizing here. Okay, and that fits fits very well. So if you're using a smaller sized, um, you know, circle, bulb, what have you, you can actually size this down by just using fewer um, chains. 
you just want it to have a nice snug fit. It doesn't have to be super tight. You definitely don't want it to be too loose. Okay, but I'm going to just go ahead forward with the numbers that I'm working on this particular size and um, show you how this is done. But I just wanted to be sure that you can have the freedom to adjust these down. All right, so I'm going to chain two. I'm going to turn. Now we're going to work an increase row where we work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, and you've noticed that I worked it in that chain one space only. After I do that, I'm gonna work a single crochet in the next single crochet. This is where we're adding additional stitches. In the next chain one space, so we are skipping the double crochet just to, just to be clear. In the next chain one space, we work another waddle stitch. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we work a single crochet in that next single crochet. And that is the repeat all the way around. Again, waddle stitch in that chain one space. And then single crochet in that next stitch. So I'll go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you what I have. As I end this round, I'm going to work a single crochet in that next stitch and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that chain space. Go ahead and chain two, turn. Now in every waddle stitch and extra single crochet, we're going to work the waddle stitch on this round. This is round number three. So we start off with a waddle stitch in that first single crochet. We always skip the double crochets. And then a waddle stitch in that waddle stitch. After that, we work a waddle stitch in that next standalone single crochet. And then skip the double crochet in one in the chain one space. Again, we're going to skip this single crochet. We work in the next single crochet for a waddle stitch and then a waddle stitch in the chain one space. So go ahead and work that all the way around. After working this all the way around, you should have a total of 12 waddle stitches if you wanted to stop and do a quick count. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. So now for round four, we're going to work single crochets. And let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to skip the first double crochet and we're going to go to that chain one space and we're going to work two single crochets in that space and then one in the next single crochet. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. Skip that double crochet, two single crochets in the chain one space and then one in the next single crochet, two in the chain one space and then one in the single crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that chain two at the beginning. Go ahead and chain one. We don't have to turn at the end of this round because we are going to be working something called a low front ridge. Now, if you do happen to turn, it really doesn't matter because at this point it is reversible, but I am not going to turn. I'm going to go right in to the next round. I'm going to skip the first stitch and working only in the front loop, I'm going to work the low front ridge. And what we do for this is we work a slip stitch worked only in the front loop, just like I'm doing here. So go ahead and work those slip stitches only in that front loop all the way around. After working these slip stitches all the way around, I'm going to join to the first slip stitch just like this. 
and I'm actually going to fasten off like that and let's go ahead and cut a nice long strand. I know this is unusual to work it quite this way for those of you who follow my channel but you'll see why in just a second and I'm going to go ahead and take the time to hide this loose strand because as we make this project we are going to be um, working it and crocheting it around the ball so there's not going to really be the same opportunity to hide these loose strands so I'm just going to hide these within the work working on the back side and you really don't have to worry about hiding it a whole lot because this is not like a garment or anything so I'm going to just cut close right there and you can see that that is fairly well hidden now one thing you can do is just double check to make sure that it's within reason as far as the sizing goes to covering our ornament and I think it is so let's continue on okay the reason that we did that is because we're getting ready now to change to our white yarn so I'm going to go ahead and get the white or you can use you know any other colors you'd like contrasting um, colors I think white is going to be stunning against this Christmas red color and it really doesn't matter where you join the yarn but I'm going to join it in the same place where I fastened off the other color all right so I'll go ahead and get my slip knot ready and I'm going to be working in the remaining loop these loops right here so I'm going to join to this one and notice I have the back side facing me go ahead and bring that thread on the inside and we are going to go ahead and work a stitch into place where we joined work a single crochet and we're working in the remaining loop which is right here if you're not sure locate the single crochet and you see the loop right there you want to be careful that we don't work into this other texture which is going to be kind of a surface texture for our design so go ahead and well if I can catch the loop there uh, work these single crochets all the way around after working this all the way around notice there is a slight gap here don't worry about that I do have a total of 36 single crochets and again if you have fewer or additional because you have a larger bulb don't worry about that we can work around these numbers they don't have to be hard and fast okay so we're going to join with a slip stitch chain one so now we're ready to start working that beautiful cable stitch we've chained one and make sure that the side with that raised low front ridge make sure that that is on the outside and we're going to work a single crochet in that first stitch chain three skip two stitches single crochet and the next stitch make it a little tricky here but just stay with me turn and working in those three chains work a single crochet in each of those chains and so that's three single crochets slip stitch in that first single crochet I may have called those single crochets yeah single crochet in each of the chains just to be clear turn again and these two stitches that we skipped we're going to now work a single crochet in each of those and we're going to do this all the way around chain three skip two single crochet in that next stitch and we're going to turn to work in the chains one single crochet in each chain and notice that I'm just working along the side of the chain you don't need to work in the back bump that's too much trouble for this project slip stitch in the next stitch turn again and now we're going to work in those two single crochets work a single crochet in each of those stitches 
Let me work this one more time for you, for those of you who've never seen this stitch. Chain three, skip two stitches, single crochet in that next stitch, turn, single crochet in each of the chains. There are three of them. Slip stitch in that single crochet, turn again, and you can pull this cable back to reveal those two single crochets, and we work single crochets in each of those. So go ahead and work that all the way around. So working that last cable, skip the last two, and right where that chain was, I'm gonna join that single crochet right there. And let's finish off this cable. Slip stitch. Let's go ahead and bring this back. And last two single crochets worked behind. And now we do need to join this, so go ahead and join right down here with this slip stitch. Okay? Chain one and turn. And now we're going to be working behind the cable. And the goal here as we work around is to have three single crochets behind each cable. We will still have a stitch count of 36. On this cable count we have 12 cables if you're following along with this size. Okay, so now for the single crochets we're going to work two single crochets in that next stitch and then one where the cable was connected. Do that all the way around. Two single crochets in that next space and then one where that cable was connected. Two single crochets and then one. So go ahead and work that all the way around. So after having worked that all the way around, don't work anything in this space here. We're going to join with a slip stitch to that chain one, just like that. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have first. This is going to be such a lovely texture. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the last two rows one more time so that we have two rounds of um, the cables, or two sets of the cables. So after that chain one, I'm going to work a single crochet in the same place as joining. I'm going to skip two stitches, chain three, single crochet in that next space, turn, and complete this cable just the way we've been working the other ones. And single crochet in those next two stitches. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the cables are lined up and that looks very good. It's lined up evenly. Go ahead, make another cable, chain three, skip two, and Continue this all the way around. So what I want you to do is finish this round and then finish. Well, I'll go ahead and work the, the following round with you because it's probably a little tricky if you've never done this before. But I'll go ahead and finish this and then I'll start you on the next round. After working that last cable, I'm going to join with a slip stitch right down where the first cable was made or, or joined and let's go ahead and chain one and turn and now working behind the cables again we're just going to work two single crochets followed by one so that you have a total of three single crochets behind each cable just like we did two rows previous so go ahead and work that all the way around at the end of this round we're going to join with a slip stitch to that chain one space and we are going to fasten off again getting back ready to change to the red color make sure you leave a nice long thread so that you can thread it into your yarn needle so what i'm going to do now i have two strands actually three if you count this one here so i'm going to go ahead and hide my loose strands and I'm going to hide them all on the inside of the work and I'll give a 
well, another quick demonstration on how I do this. Um, just make sure as you run these down into the stitches that they are hidden and you want to cut them close to the stitches so that you know these little strands aren't going to show on your ornament. Okay, so I'm going to just run these down into the stitches and it doesn't have to be super precise since this is just a Christmas ornament. It's not like a garment that's going to be worn. But that that actually that actually should be plenty for this. And then what I'm going to do is cut it very close. Make sure you use a pair of sharp scissors, not a dull pair, because you don't want to just gnaw on the yarn. You don't you want to have a nice clean cut. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these other two strands and then we'll resume working on the rest of this ornament. Now it's time to rejoin the red colored yarn. And I'm going to do that with a slip stitch and I'm going to join it in the same place where, okay, let's try right there, where we left off. You can really rejoin anywhere. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to try to keep all of the, the um, row joins in the same space. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work the low front ridge again. So we work this by working only in the front loop, just like we did before. And we work slip stitches in the front loop all the way around. So go ahead and work that. After working that all the way around, I'm going to join with a just a slip stitch to that first place on joining. And we're going to chain one and turn and working in the remaining loop, which is right down here. Again, locate the single crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in that remaining loop all the way around. Okay. After working these all the way around, I have done a stitch count. And we do still have 36 stitches. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. I'm going to chain two before I turn. Let's take a look at what we have. So now we're going to return to the waddle stitch, but we're going to do it slightly differently from the way we did it before. Okay, we're going to start in the next stitch, single crochet chain one, double crochet, and we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two. Instead of skipping one, because we were increasing on this round, we're actually going to slightly decrease on this round, so we'll skip two stitches, and, and we'll work in the next stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. We'll do that again for you, skip two, and then we work that waddle stitch in the next space. So go ahead and work that all the way around. So at the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that turning chain, chain two, turn, and we're going to do this one more time, working only in the chain one spaces now. We're going to work those waddle stitches around. Again, only in the chain one spaces work your waddle stitches for this round. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch. And let's go ahead before we go any further and hide any last strands that have not been hidden because after this round, we are going to be crocheting with the ball inside the work. So there's not going to be any opportunity to go back and hide these loose strands. So let's go ahead and bring these up and under some of these stitches. And I think that's good. So this won't be seen again. There we go. And so we will be turning. So now we're going to put the ornament or the, the plastic ball inside the work and your work should stretch 
over this just like a sock. Okay. And make sure we get that situated just like that. Make sure. Wow, see how easily that went over that? Okay, so now we have just a few more rounds. Okay, so we did join. Let's go ahead and chain two. And this round, we are going to alternate what we work in these chain one spaces. So we're going to only work in the chain one spaces, just like we've been doing with the waddle stitches. But we're going to work, start by working a waddle stitch in the first chain one space. I know it's a little tricky to see with this ornament inside, but as you'll see, it's going to get tighter and tighter. And then in the next chain one space, we're going to work just a single crochet. And you do want to have some tension on this yarn. Don't be real loose about it because it is, you know, closing in over the bottom of the ornament. So the next chain one space, we work a waddle stitch. And then the next space, a single crochet. And again, pull it kind of, kind of taut there. And then the next, a waddle stitch. And then after we finish this, we work another single crochet worked in that chain one space. So go ahead and work this all the way around and I will show you the join. Now, if you're finding it hard to see where the original chain two space is, you can always add a stitch marker there. I, I don't need one personally, but if you wanna add one there, just so you don't go too far, that would be a good idea. After working this all the way around, and I did end with just a single crochet in the last waddle stitch, we're gonna join with a slip stitch. And make sure it's a nice tight slip stitch. There we go. Chain two, and then we're going to turn. Might be a little bit easier to work this particular round. And for this round, we are only going to work um, waddle stitches in each of the waddle stitches. So we're going to skip these freestanding single crochets and go just for the chain twos. And let's go ahead and work waddle stitches in all of the waddle stitches. Skipping this stitch. I'm way over here. So go ahead and work this all the way around. So as we're working with this, and if you find that the yarn is just too far apart, you can kind of push this, push down on this ball so that the yarn gathers more closely together. And I've worked all the way around, and you can tell that we are ready to join because you see the front side of these stitches showing. So we're going to join with a slip stitch in this chain two space. I know this is awkward. Chain, chain two. We're going to turn. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to work. We're going to be working from this side, but I'm going to just show you here. I'm going to work a waddle stitch, single crochet, waddle stitch, single crochet, waddle stitch, single crochet as we go around for this round. Again, this is a decrease round. We're bringing it all in close. So waddle stitch, single crochet, A waddle stitch, single crochet. Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> okay, there we go. Very strange angles for my hands. Well, we don't have to do this in large numbers of stitches. Do a waddle stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet. And join with a slip stitch to that first stitch all the way around, chain one, turn. Now this will be our final round. What we're going to do is we're going to work a single crochet in the single crochet and a single crochet in that chain one space of the waddle stitch as we work around. 
work in the next single crochet. And then that waddle stitch. Single crochet. And you'll know that we are done when you start seeing the front side of these stitches. Okay, and I see the, the stitch right here. I'm gonna join to that chain one, or chain two space actually. Let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this yarn a little bit tight around that hook. There we go. The slip stitch, and I'm gonna give it a chain for a fasten off, but I'm gonna give this a rather long, a long thread because I'm going to run this under. Go ahead and give it at least you know eight to ten inches here, just to make it easier to do what we're going to do with our yarn needle. And so what we're going to do is, well, let's go ahead and pull this through first. I didn't do that. Go ahead and pull this all the way through. Give it a nice tug. Now what we're going to do is just try to close up this hole a little bit. So let's go ahead and re-thread the thread again. Re-thread the needle. There we go. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down. Actually, let's just go here. We're gonna go in and out the window around these stitches. You can really do it anyway, but the idea is to just close up this opening here. And it looks like that is closed, so let's go ahead and and then run some of these stitches, or these, um, run this thread under some more stitches. We want to do this in a way that it doesn't show too much. And I'm going to run it under these stitches here, which are fairly tight. And let's go ahead and run them under some of these as well. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna cut this close so it doesn't show, and that should be fine. You should not see that at all. Okay, so now other options, you can put a little bit of wet, like glue inside and sprinkle around and then drop some glitter inside should you want glitter to shine through this or you can just leave it as is. And I have my little ornament here. The top, I'm gonna just put this back on. You can see how beautifully that fits. Now I could cut this off. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip this tag and I'm just gonna leave this strand but that the tag came with it. it looks beautiful I can hang it on the tree let's go ahead and trim that a little bit and we are ready to hang our cabled ornament Hope you enjoyed making this crocheted Christmas ornament with me today. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. And that way you won't miss any of the new offerings that will be coming your way. And if you're looking for ad-free, spam-free crochet projects with exclusive content and complimentary written patterns, please check out the watch.bonniebaycrochet.com channel. Have an absolutely wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and definitely a Happy New Year. God bless. Bye-bye.